Hello. What? Hi. <laughs> Caught us off guard there, strangers. I know, right? This is like we have. This is kind of like how we didn't. Uh, this is on our. It's like it's our second try or whatever. You know, doing this today. <laughs> is it? No, we. No, this- it's just it's a it's a new thing that we're doing, where we we, we do an an episode for three minutes and then we stop and then we start a new one. Oh yeah, this is the second um second week in a row that we did that, huh? Yeah. But this time, this time your computer was haunted. Before we get into that, just so you guys know what channel you're on, you're watching the show. This is the future, unfortunately. I'm Tony G. That's Alex Rios. Thanks for showing up. Yeah. Anyway, you your shit's haunted, and it's a new it's a new Apple computer. Which is kind of it, funny. It is haunted. Um, are you sure yeah. your hair's not haunted? Because that shit's fucking spooky. Oh, that's haunted too. Look at that. That's fucking gross, isn't that? God. I really. <laughs> you have all the hair that I'm missing. It's like. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I have all the hair that everybody's missing. No. <laughs> no, it's true. I have so much hair. Uh, locks of garbage. I, I had a dream that I was, uh, um, that I lost my hair. Well, I had a receding hairline like the like back here, and I woke up like in a panic, um, which is weird because I'm not worried about losing my. If I were to lose my hair, I wouldn't. I wouldn't care. It would just be a reason to get a head tattoo. Fuck but, yeah! Like it would be. I'd be like, I don't care. But for some reason, and I, I I woke up. I had like a receding hairline, and I like looked like my my head was all fucking weirdly shaped like the Elephant Man and. And I woke up like, ah, fuck, no. Ah. <laughs> and then, yeah. but I just Dream thought of something. Happened. When I was younger, I was, I was 10 times cockier. And uh, one time I had visited my cousin and his friends. I didn't usually drink with them. We're at a bar in Philly. Somehow we got drunk and started talking about, I just went on this thing about, I would get, if someone paid for it, I would get a dick tattooed on my head. Like up yeah. here. Okay. Right? that I would do that. If someone else would pay for it, I would have a dick tattooed on my head and then the hair will grow back and it'll be done. And I would have done it because I'm a fucking idiot. And now I'm really glad I didn't because now that I you know, see forward 20 years, I can see that my fucking hairline isn't cooperating. We would just have the tip of a penis like coming out right here, you know, like. Oh, barely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just like right, just like right here because it would have been on the top of my head. So just like the tip of a dick. And there's like nothing I can do except like, like just constantly worry about what this is doing to cover it up. And or, then people or, just constantly ask me, why didn't you just get a dick tattooed on your head? You already started. And I'm like, it is up here already. Like, then I have to show people. I just don't want to do that. Or, or you would just it. like, just shave it and just lean into it. Be like, yeah, I got a dick tattooed on my head. I what? would own it. I would own it if I had it, but I'm glad I don't is what I'm getting at. I'm glad I, that people didn't pay to have a dick tattooed on my head. If you were there and you didn't, and you didn't participate in having, helping me get a dick on my head, I appreciate you. Because I would have asked for a big, veiny, triumphant bastard. Mm. It would have gotten expensive. Yeah, well. You know, talking about heads, I thought something yesterday. I watched uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I've seen it yeah. before. But yeah. um, really gave it a good watch in there, uh, meaning I was probably sober. And uh, sober. the end fucks me up. But what got me this time was after they lobotomized his ass, they showed his head. And I was like, holy shit, I have the same hairline as Jack Nicholson after the lobotomy. I mean, my hair looks just like his shit. It really does. Like we have that, a lot of people have that, like, this fucking thing going on. If you look at Bill Murray and Ghostbusters, him in that fucking movie, yeah. everyone just has yeah. these chunks missing where the fucking peaks go past your ears. So you got to even that shit up. Except they didn't. And so I look like McMurphy after a fucking lobotomy. And I think a lot of people probably feel that I would wish that I was lobotomized. I, I, maybe, that's fine. Drooling all over myself, you know, being suffocated yeah, I, under a pillow by a giant Indian. I think if you, uh, I think if you got uh, uh, lobotomized, it probably wouldn't work, probably wouldn't take. I don't think so either. I think there'd just be a bunch of like, you know, like, <laughs> they look like, like forks, it look like where people stuck forks in my dome. But mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if it would work because they would, they would hit that spot and then realize there is no frontal lobe. Like, the fuck? That's the problem. We need to give him a lobe, not take it away. Who has an extra lobe? That's the problem. He needs a lobe. 
<laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to hey, crack uh, this. Did you crack yours? No, speaking of lobes, let's do this. I don't know what that means. But... All right, ready? Ready? I'm ready. Oh, you're drinking Coors Light, huh? Like a Again, real man. We, huh? Well, they got three more weeks of this shit. I got a six pack. Oh, well, yeah. I couldn't find Pabst. God knows I looked. Mm. Three more weeks of what? Of Coors. No, no. It's the only time I drink this shit is when we do this. Uh, okay, because I was like, <laughs> a pack of Coors Light would not last me three weeks. <laughs> 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 yeah, even my, it's funny, my dad doesn't usually drink a bunch, but he's getting older and he's around me, so we do that. It's a hobby. And right. um, he, even he said, he was like, he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't drink, I don't drink fucking, I don't drink Coors. It's like drinking water. And I'm talking, I'm like, dude, you're the one who got me onto this shit. It's just funny. It's like, it's like you moved <laughs> up and forgot to tell, you forgot that you hooked everyone up with something. Like, I don't do that anymore. I stopped. But like, but you were on heroin and told us we should do heroin. And now yeah, you're going to quit? Yeah. And you're going to talk bad about it? What the fuck? <laughs> like, I bought a six-pack of heroin, and I got to finish it now. So what the fuck? Oh, that'd be cool if heroin came in six-packs. Alex, like if a... it does, it's going to happen in Oregon, because you guys decided, well, not you, but the state decided we should, you should give that a shot. And I got people over here shaking their fucking heads. But Yeah, like, uh, add, like to decriminalize like everything, basically. Yeah. What's your take on that? I don't give a shit. I think it's cool either way. Yeah, I, I really just kind of like, oh, it's kind of like another episode of life. You're just like, oh, <laughs> this will be interesting. I think it's, uh, I, when I say I don't give a shit, I'm more leaning towards, uh, I, think it's, I think it's awesome. More of like, I don't use any drugs besides uh, pot and alcohol, so... Those are legal over here for now. And uh, um, so I'm not really affected by it, but also it's like, might as well legalize everything. People are doing it anyways, legalize it. Like, fuck it. I don't really care. <laughs> you know? From a thinking standpoint, just like a, what will this do to the state of Oregon? Will it bring more people in that have those issues? Mm -hmm. And Will that help with lowering rents? That's all I care about. Will right. rent get cheaper? What can Oregon do so I can afford to move back? I don't care no. if my neighbors are all fans of puncture wounds. That's not a problem for me, as long as they don't take my shit. I just need to know that if that's going on, is rent going to get cheaper? Like, what's going on out there? Help me out. I mean, that's cool if everyone's fucked up. Well, everyone's fucked up anyway. They're just mostly high on prescription pills. Until they ran right. out, and now you know Oregon. Uh, Oregon is one of the states that actually made the biggest mess with the opiate crisis because they mm -hmm. were writing more fucking scripts than any other state, from what I read. So they're, it kind of makes Oregon sense that they're going with legalization. It's like, yeah, you fucking did it to them. <laughs> what do you expect? Jesus right. Christ. Well, I think the 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 goal is like, especially with heroin, because opiates and heroin like you said like are, are very popular here in oregon especially in portland and like a, like really popular in in the northwest and uh so i think if like the goal is is if you legalize it or at least like dec decriminalize it like um you know there won't be you know people like a won't be like looked at as criminals for it they could get mental help That's instead of huge. going the prison for they could actually get real mental help and addiction help because my theory is addiction isn't a doesn't mean you're a criminal addiction no. means you have a type of mental illness that you need help with right. it's a mental illness problem not not a criminal problem i would agree and, with that. so i think if you legalize it or decriminalize it it'll it'll push that step that in the right direction of like actually people getting more help right and maybe the fentanyl problem that will help the fentanyl problem go away or at least be lower than it is because fentanyl is what's killing people hmm. you know that you know what fentanyl is i don't know what it is i i mean i definitely know that people are getting it in their fucking shit and it's killing them they've been doing that here in yeah. delaware for the long wilmington's got a huge yeah. problem with that shit too it's no it, it's an open 
opioid, but it's very, very strong. Very strong. And people are cutting heroin with it. Uh, people are giving like Oxycontin, like making Oxycontin look like fentanyl. And people are taking, you know, like, oh, I'll take like four oxys and pop them and then die. Or like shoot the same amount of heroin and then die. And it's like, or people are getting really addicted to it. And it's just, there's too much built up in their body. And then they overdose. So is fentanyl manufactured by, by us or is, is it a a legal, is it a legal drug? I don't, I don't know what fentanyl, is fentanyl something that came from? Yeah, it's a. I mean, I could be wrong. Someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think it is, it's a legal prescription drug. It's like what, that, what I get from it. I think people are prescribed that. Like I said, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But I, right. I, I just, just shake my foot. That, that's what I know. Um, or that's what I think I was told anyway. Um, well, but yeah, so I just, I just felt like, if you legalize it, decriminalize it, people are going to do it anyways. And then if you just, if you make it not le- illegal, you know, people won't go to fucking prison because they're just going to do it again when they get out or when they're in there, they're going to do it because there's drugs inside of prison, you know? Oh yeah. That ain't no heroin doesn't thing, go away just because you go to prison. Like, no, you just have to, you have to give up butt love for it, you know? Yeah. Just or, you know, you can pay a CO for it, you know? Like, <laughs> you got to do something, you know. <laughs> it ain't get, free, honky. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm, I'm mm. curious. I'm, I am curious what's that, what that's going to do. Maybe it'll be like, I don't know. I'm, I hope, yeah, I don't, I'm really, really curious. I'm, I'm glad that Oregon's been on the forefront of a few things. I'm, I'm excited. It's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. Now, I do live on the East Coast. And there's a lot of fucking old school, you know opinionated bullshit around here but what the fuck do they know i'm sure all right. the people that live up in fucking north philly sure as shit would like it's rather be legalized than not right you know? I, I don't just leave them I the don't, fuck alone right because making something illegal doesn't mean someone's not going to do it clearly no, it, so if you legalize it. it it's not going to make things worse maybe for a second and then it's it's going to maybe go like this and it's going to level out you know, people are going to go crazy for a little bit because they're like, oh, my God, it's fucking legal. <sighs> like, it's like, you know, but after a while, I think it's going to play it out and just kind of maybe uh, hopefully get better. And um, yeah, I'd like to see it go that way. Because if, if they like legal, if they fully legalize it, then that means they could kind of do what pot is doing have like not necessarily like <laughs> shops where you go get <laughs> your smack and you go pick it out like i want to fucking you know i want like three grams of of the fucking angel the angel dick heroin you know like this gram of smack is whack i want my money back <laughs> no <Yeah>. refunds <laughs> <laughs> like can i get my can i get a hair uh, a receipt for my heroin, please. Um, I need to put it. I need. <laughs> I need to put it on my. Yeah. Taxes. What's the uh, What's the opioid count on this shit? Because it seems kind of weak. I'm gonna need you to step it up. Yeah. Right. Um. But I mean, like, more of like you know, like a doctor office situation. You know, someone. It's legal for someone to give you pills. Like it's easier to get pills. You know. Not yeah. not a doctor giving you a bag of actual heroin. They give you like the, a new pill or like you know whatever. Like or some or they maybe they take you in and you they shoot you up, you know. Right. And it's more more controlled because in Europe they have little places where uh, um, addicts could go and shoot their drugs and and it's fine. Like right. So I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I just think, yeah. I guess when I said I don't care, I guess I, I guess I really do care. So no, you give a <laughs> shit. You, I, I mean, I, I know where you're coming from. The same attitude that I have about it. I, I'm not, I don't have a dog in that fight. But if you're asking me if I think it's a good thing over a bad thing, I would like to see how this goes because what's been working in the past ain't been working at all. Just profiting motherfuckers who make the pills and destroying people's lives. So yeah, there's got to there be something better than that. 
So, yeah. and obviously there was enough people in Oregon behind it to get it passed. So I'm, we're not the only ones who think it's at least something of an interesting slash good idea. And I get this. I heard that um, my girlfriend's brother was telling me that they're um, wanting to like, like uh, almost every drug was like, tr- is trying to like, is like going to be decriminalized, I think. Mm-hmm. And you could, I, <laughs> maybe he was joking, but so that you, like acid was on the bill and you could have up to 40 hits of acid. No, I saw that. Yeah. 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 Isn't that fucking nuts? 40, 40. I took eight, eight hits one time and had a really bad two days. So Uh, 40. (laughs) Dude, it reminds me of SLC punk when the kid put the acid in his pants and then the the water went through it and they found him sitting (laughs) on that fucking stool. Like, yeah, and he's like, he's like in, the ah! middle of the yard, in the middle of the yard. How you doing that, Bob? How am I doing what? Walking on water. Yeah. You know what, Bob? You are Jesus. You're right. I am. Why do you ask? Don't do acid. If you're going to do it, make sure you know you're doing it. Right. That's not cool, man. That's 40 people you could fuck with one night. Just mm-hmm. cost me 20 bucks. Right. 40. That's a, that's so much. That's so much. Did I ever tell you God. the story? This kid, when I was in high school, this guy wasn't in, he was out of school, I guess. But anyway, he was a friend of ours, skater group. And he came up. The fuck happened? Anyway, I ran into this guy and someone had told me, hey, you know, watch out for him. He's on one right now. And he was like, he was out in front of the school and he had his jaw kind of like locked up and he's like, Hey man, how you doing? And I'm just like, Hey, I, I heard about you, man. What's up, dude? Long story short, this guy had 75 hits of double, like a double dip blotter acid or something. So it was the equivalent of 150 hits of LSD. And it, we lived in the town of Grand Forks, North Dakota. Mm-hmm. And acid didn't come through much because who the fuck cares about North Dakota? Right. So in any case, he got he took a few hits and everyone kept asking him to have some, like to buy it or whatever. Well, he was already tripping. He got paranoid, so he ate it all. Oh all God! It. Oh, yeah. God. yeah. So apparently, he ended up like in the room where the washing machine is at someone's apartment for a couple of days, and then he came and then he got out, and I saw him at the school and he had lockjaw. No shit. And so then I was like, okay, far out. That sucks. And everyone's like, oh, he'll be cool. He'll come down. It'll all work out. Saw him a month later. Dude was fucked up. The right, like the right side of his face doesn't really work anymore. Like he kind of like had partial paralysis from it. Oh, wow. Really? And I was just like, holy shit. And I had never done acid before. And I was like, so like, what does one hit do? <laughs> and they're like, "Oh no, one's a lot of fun." And I'm like, "Oh, I'll have one of those. I don't want that. I want a little, a little." Yeah. <laughs> and then my teacher was like, "And cre- it was my senior year, and she's like, you guys need to write about something impactful.'" I wrote about that, like, exactly that story. I wrote it. I never forget this. I was like, "Is it cool if I write about this?" And she's like, "Sure." And only in the last line of the paper did I mention one hit was a lot better than 75 <laughs> like, like insinuating that i had also dropped acid and she was right. just like is the last sentence is that true i was like yeah that's my closer and she's like all right we'll leave that in but i'm not going to show this to anybody <laughs> <laughs> she's like she told me she's like it's a great paper man you could fucking write you know blah 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 but you know don't don't do acid man <laughs> I'm like i already did it <laughs> or don't <laughs> Don't tell me you did. <laughs> yeah. That guy has lockjaw, so I tried. I decided to try it after I saw that. I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> Hi, I'm a bright bulb. <laughs> um, have you seen that guy since? No, I haven't. Because, I know. I really want to know, but because sometimes you know, there's still fu- people like I, there's this guy that he was like a local weirdo where in Redmond, you know like where I grew up and you know every town has at least one or maybe you know a lot more than one local weirdos you know and this guy his name was Smiley Ryan and that's because he had a permanent fucking smile on his face 
even when he was upset and he barely talked. And when he did, it was mostly to himself. And he would walk from Redmond to Bend, Oregon. Just, and you know how, you know, it's, it's not a short walk. <laughs> 15 to 20, it's like 20 miles. Yeah, it's doable, but I mean, it's not, you're just walking in a straight fucking line, you know, and on the side of the highway. And he used to do that all the time. We'd be getting a fucking burrito and then we want, we'd want to go to a show like four hours later and we'd see him walking halfway, halfway to fucking Ben, just smiling and all big eyed. And apparently what happened was he did a lot of, did a lot of acid and then, and then the same night got a bad batch of heroin. OD'd but survived and it fucking fried his brain and ever since he's just been on still on a little trip you know fuck and uh my god yeah, I told you like, no go ahead good ahead. oh I was gonna say like I know I knew someone that knew him pretty well said even when he would get upset he'd still be smiling and look like he was happy and it was just fucking really kind of scary and bizarre that's a shame man <laughs> That's a but everyone has one of those a, a guy or a person like that in their town, especially if it's a small town. You mean, and a lot of people know each other. It's like, uh, there's Smiley Ryan or you know, Butt Fucking Henry or somebody. You know, some there's somebody. <laughs> there's like, yeah, you know, there's. Well, I got to share the story that my buddy Brian, who watches the show sometimes, he told me this story when I really was just I had done acid, but when I met him, we started doing a little bit more acid together. And he, he told me this story. I don't think that you should tell your friends stories about people that you know that have OD'd on a drug that you're about to put them on. I don't think you should do that. Oh, but like what? Tell, tell a story about a drug. Say, and hey, like, hey, we're about to drop acid. I want to tell you a story about a guy I dropped acid with who's in a mental institution because he dropped acid. Right. Like, yeah, that's like... A that's like talking about plane crashes when you're on a plane. Yes. Right? So but it's like, worse yeah. because you're about to do this shit to your brain. So whatever's yeah. on your mind when you do acid, that's your trip, dude. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> I spent six hours looking for orange slices with four people in tow one night because that's the last fucking thing I said before I dropped it. I saw the moon yeah. and I was like, orange slices. And we found those fucking things, but that was a safe thing to be looking for, you know? So he tells me this story one time of a friend of his in high school who dropped acid, dropped enough acid to think he was a glass of orange juice. And he lasted, <laughs> that brother, <laughs> I love my stories because I didn't make this shit up. I love when people share their things with me. In any case, he tells me this story and he, it's funny, but it's not. He says that, so the kid came back to school and he was wearing his pajamas and everyone's like, hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? And people would get close to him, and that's when they realized there was a fucking problem. Because he would get close to him, and he would just start, like, kind of tensing up. And he'd be like, don't come near me, man. You're going to fucking spill me. Stop. You're going to spill me. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but it's fucking scary, man. <laughs> I don't want that life. I mean, I, I took a tab after that. I think I took the tab and then he told me and then I tripped, you know, like right after I dropped the acid, he's like, hey, did I ever tell you about the orange, the orange juice story? <laughs> but he told me to the end of that story. He told me years later, he's like, yeah, that guy is in a mental institution. He wears pajamas and he still thinks he's a glass of orange juice. I'm like, well, he still th thinks he is. Yeah, he didn't come back. He's still there. He's still oh, he's still in Tropicana land, dude. <laughs> this fucking sucks. <laughs> He concentrated too hard. <laughs> He's there, man. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, I used to be a comedian. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> um, I know a guy that did a lot of drugs, and I've done drugs with him. And when I say I've done drugs with him, I mean just hallucinogens, you know, things that will turn you into glasses of orange juice. Um. But I never did this with him, but he did this drug called Foxy. I'm not 100% sure what it is. I know it's a hallucinogen, like a lot like LSD and ecstasy, he was saying. He said it was kind of like a combination of the two. And, but it's really, really, really fucking strong. He just said it makes you, he said it makes you feel like, like fucking, 
and hardcore hallucinations all at the same time. So you're like, you know, you could want to fuck that fucking ginormous mon- green monster in the corner, you know? I don't know. But he took a lot of that one time and uh, he got lost in the woods for two weeks on it and and then showed back up like with no tent or gear of any sort for camping just walked out in the middle of the woods and just luckily it was summer <laughs> so huh. the the you know elements weren't too harsh but he was you know came back a lot but he he did foxy for years and he just a door opened and then never closed yeah. in his brain it's still open and yeah he's got he's got a little bit of issues i'm gonna go into it or say his name because he's you know close friend but whew, bad news bad news hey what's up with that remember that guy when i was living in town that had a convertible with painted and it was full of stuff and he had a bunch of dogs yeah i know who you're talking about and he dressed he, he was you know he it's wore like, woman's clothes sometimes yeah yeah is, is that person still around I don't think so. I haven't seen him in a while. Um, I, mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if they a are. Story, that was a story of, of I heard. Now that that was a kind of person that done a lot of hallucinogenics, too many. Sure. Last thing I heard about that person, they were, um, their their fam like they're they're independently wealthy. Yeah, is what I. I think and, anyone who told me. Yeah. Yeah. Their family has had had something to do with the funny farm, and if you don't know what the funny farm is, it's this place that was outside of Bend, Oregon, in between <laughs> Redmond and Oregon, and it's cool as shit. It started out as like a costume shop, that but was a cover for things, and um, you know a costume shop, um, um, and then. And then it turned into like an antique place. And then it had, was kind of like a museum for weird things. You know, like there was mannequins that were on posts that were stuck into the ground and bowling yeah. balls on posts stuck into the ground. All these like quirky, weird, acid trip, bizarre, bad dream kind of clowny things. You know, they had like a goat petting zoo and that yeah. sort of thing. There was comedy shows there. But what I heard was that person that we're talking about, their family had ownership of maybe of of some sort of with the funny farm. Their family got um, disconnected with the funny farm. And then that person came back and like tried to fuck with the owners and they had to call the cops. And then that person went to jail and that's the last story i heard about that oh okay all right person portable so yeah well, hmm. well that, that dude was a trip too man I'm, I'm trying to remember some of the stories but i've i've had personal interactions with that guy never a problem but just yeah. crazy yeah, I, have, shit. I have too so, yeah like yeah it came into my gym and wanted to like at the where i was working at the gym and wanted to like wash the dogs i'm like <laughs> what he's like yeah i want to wash my dogs here and i'm like that's not uh, you have a membership <laughs> like they, they have a membership the <laughs> like can you follow the rules for me so i can make my 10 bucks an hour and get the fuck out of here like what are you talking about but yeah there's some people out there man that's what i'm saying like will will portland my big question is will the one state out of all 40 of all 50 the one state that first legalizes all narcotics will it be a mass exodus to that state for people who are on narcotics that's just a question i have doesn't matter it's none of my fucking business i'm just curious Uh what what will be the repercussions of this tony wants to watch the show i'm curious i i I hope it all works out but we're humans and it usually doesn't so right curious to see how (laughs) it's gonna go (laughs) yeah well what i think it will happen is like I said before, it'll get, it'll be, there will be an heightened fit of, you know, maybe crime or drug use or whatnot because people are like, you know, they're on fucking, they're having a fucking holiday. Like it's a fucking vacation and they're just like, ah, fucking, fucking, like, 
right. doing all sorts of things. And there's going to be craziness for a little bit. And then I think after that, you know, it'll get better. I think it will. Well, to quote but, the old the old lady and Tommy boy, that's when the whores come in, traipsing around. <laughs> <sighs> hey, you can stop this show and go watch that one. That's fucking funny. I love that line. <laughs> that's when the whores come in. A dollar for okay. a trick here. One time I visited a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> the you won't shut up about it. <laughs> my my life's been a living hell ever ever since. <laughs> Why don't they write shit like that anymore? I don't see things like that anymore. It's fucking funny. <laughs> a PG-13 <laughs> movie about hookers in a town that's going under. That's great. <laughs> she said that, and and everyone around the table was like, oh, my God. Like, here yeah, we go. Yeah, except David Spade was like, I like her idea. <laughs> yeah. I, like I want to hear more about the horse. <laughs> the funny thing is, I go to Sandusky, the town that that's about, for C Cedar Point, just like everyone else in the world who... That's why you go to Cedar Point. If you watch that movie, you're kind of like, yeah, you could tell that Callahan Auto definitely closed down around here. This <laughs> shit's rough. <laughs> like they should, they shouldn't open up the muffler plant again. You know what I yeah. mean? This place is <laughs> a little rough. <laughs> Fuck me, That's man. Weird. Yeah, it's almost like we came here to have fun. Fuck, I feel bad. <laughs> should right. I smile? <laughs> um. Oh shit! Some more stuff about Oregon. I don't mean to make it all about where, you know, please what's going on like on my about my neck of the woods. But um, you probably heard about this. Uh, starting tomorrow, tomorrow we're going back in lockdown. Ah, that's before. what I wanted to talk about because we're having yeah. similar things here. So please share. Yeah. yeah. What are the rules? Uh, what's happening? Um, the all the rules that I know is. Four weeks of lockdown, so all restaurants, no. bar, bars, that sort of thing. It's just going to be another lockdown. So closed? Gonna, well, well um, not closed, but, like, you can't – no one could come in. Okay. No could, not, 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 when I say closed, I meant, like, it was how it was before, how people did close. So, yeah, I should re re reiterate. Not closed, but either closed or to-go food only. So – but so, you guys, you guys were closed. You just reopened. We just reopened like a week and a half ago. So what's going to happen is we're just going to go do, we're just going to do to go food, try to tough it out. Hopefully there's not too much money loss Fuck. for a month. And then be ready to open back up within a month. But here's the thing. When this first started, they said two weeks. Well, it's been a lot longer than fucking two weeks. So I don't trust everyone Everyone that I'm working with, like the owners and everything, you know, like they're great and everything. I'm not talking shit. I'm just saying. No. It's your not like four, in, in four weeks, in four weeks. And I'm, in the back of my head, I'm like, ah. Said the know, same man. shit before to get us in the house. And then you kept us in there for fucking months. Yeah. So it's like, I hope, I hope that it's only four weeks. But you know, if what if the only thing you're going off of is what happened last time, then four weeks is probably bullshit. But with that being said, it's, you know, cases are going up. I have known more people in the last two months that have gotten COVID than I've known at the beginning of when it yeah. started. So uh, I've known comics, and people from band back home like a bunch of like not a bunch but quite a few people a number a, a number of people and their families have gotten it and then they know and then they got it from other people that they know obviously so i don't know i don't fucking disagree with it shutting down i disagree with how the governor did it because this is what she said she was like she was like all bars and restaurants have to go do to-go food and, you know, she basically was placating us and treating the restaurant industry and bar industry like a bunch of trash people, basically, talking down to us, like saying, like, you know, you guys are just going to have to tough it out like everyone else. We, you know, I, I love our local businesses just as much as everyone. 
you know, everyone has to sacrifice. I was like, fuck you, sacrifice. You make a, over $100,000 a year. You're going to be fine. There's no, you have a fucking, the governor's mansion, you know? You're fucking set. Like, there's people protecting you because they get paid to. You live yeah. in a fucking mansion. We pay you over $100,000 a year. And, yeah, people protect you. you, you there's not any, any sacrifice for you. The, Isn't the, she the one that was caught with a fucking entourage when this shit was locked down the first time and wasn't wearing a fucking mask and went on vacation or some shit? Isn't she one of those? I'm pretty sure she made the fucking papers for that. Maybe. Um, in any case, if you're in charge, shut the fuck up. How about well, here, that? Here's, here's my thing. Here's my thing. If I was a leader of any sort, this is, this is what happened. This is, all right. So when a kid does something wrong and like let's say the kid goes and like shoots up a school right the people always point their finger at at the parent they always go how come the parent didn't do this how come the parent yeah didn't that's do not that? how that works yeah you know, right in this situation here in portland people are not pointing their finger at the governor they're pointing their finger at everyone around them and being like you didn't wear a mask. You didn't wear a mask. That's why we're being shut down. Do you know what it is? Tell me. It's not our fault. It's the, it's the governor's fault because they're the parent. They're, they're the person in charge. They're the manager. At your work, when something happens, that's why managers are dicks. Well, one of the reasons is because everything falls onto their head. Yep. So they treat everyone else like shit a lot of the time. So it's not... It's not our fault. It's not the people around us fault. You know, maybe yeah, being people should could have been safer, but it's the governor's fault. It's mom's fault. It's dad's fault. Because it has to be. Not that it te- ne- necessarily is, but it has to be on her. She has to take the blame. She has to go. Listen, I'm well off. I'm not going I'm not going to suffer. You are, and that sucks, but I'm going to make this decision anyway. If she talked in plain English, like all of us, all of, all of us animals could fucking understand and just be like, hey, you're all fucked, and I'm really sorry about that, and I hope we'll get back on track, but this is what has to happen. I would respect her more. Yeah, but I don't, they're not worried about res- Yeah, Just like something that someone that I, I think Dave Chappelle said recently, and I think I mentioned it, but it really, it really, it sits on me that like he's, and I think I said it in the last episode, so excuse me, but I look at, I look at people like this now and I can't help it. I had said that Dave Chappelle had quoted someone as saying that rich people, rich white people make fun of poor white people. Like yeah. we ain't shit either. So I think that once you make it a hundred thousand dollars a year, ain't a lot of money. She's still in that club. She's got the status. I think it's really hard to be in that situation. And consider yourself one of them right because in a lot of situations you're not you're leading them you're not them so you talk down to them or you talk to them like it's this is your problem now one thing i learned in the military and i loved anyone i worked under that knew this and i think that this carries over um maybe i'm nuts but i think this carries over a good leader doesn't talk about a, it's not your problem it's our fucking problem mm-hmm. I live here, this is my state, and I'm directly responsible for everything that happens in it. So if right. anyone fucking dies, anyone gets sick, that's on me. Yep. So listen, I'm sorry that we have to close this shit down for four weeks. I really fucking am, because I don't know if there's any money coming. I don't know what we're gonna do yet. So I really don't wanna send you guys home after you spent six fucking months in the house. I really don't. I'm gonna have losing fucking sleep tonight over this shit something like that sounds a little bit better than this is what you're gonna have to do like you know what fuck you then good luck getting reelected. seriously watch your fucking mouth you only get a few chances to do the right thing in that position most governors mayors assholes that are in charge don't get an opportunity like this this is an opportunity to fucking shine as best as you can yes most people are going to call you a bag of shit anyway but all that people are really here is the dumb shit that comes out of your mouth. That's it. 
They just hear the dumb fucking words that come out of your mouth. So make them sound like you give a shit. Just yeah. pretend. Just fucking pretend. So that way see, people go along with you instead of yeah. shit bombing your house. Just and see, that's the you. thing. If she would just pretend like she is one of us, like act like one of us. She doesn't. Instead of like tiptoeing, tiptoeing around the tulips like we're a bunch of fucking idiots, you know. People, like I know a lot of people that are like, especially restaurant industry people that do are like, have completely lost respect for um, Kate Brown. And it's just like, like, no, she's fucking like taking a shit on us. Like, yeah, I've talked to people that are like, I understand that it, that it should be closed. And it's like, it probably should be, or maybe it shouldn't, but maybe it's for the best that it is, you know, we, we, we can make it work. We did make it work for however long we'll make it work again. But the way she talked to everyone and the way she addressed it was just making everyone feel and sound like they're a bunch of scoundrels, like a bunch of yep. idiots like, that don't know how to read and fucking can't understand fucking, you know, the governor talk. You got to talk to all these idiots. You got to talk slow, you know, like, no, you know, you're not going to sacrifice. I know. I know she's not a crazy rich person, but she, <laughs> she she's a leader. She's, she's been given us. power. She's been given huh? power. She'll never, she doesn't have to worry about fucking money unless she's an idiot. She's got connections for the rest of her life. Someone will take mm -hmm. care of her stupid fucking ass. We don't have those privileges. You don't know what it's like. I mean, how often do people get to be governed, appreciate that they're being governed, and then govern? Does that right. make sense? To be yeah. in the position, be like, I'm a peon but I respect the governor and then to be the governor and govern peons because you're, you get both perspectives. Most people don't get that. So her ass got sent up the chain. She's running, she's running the fucking the state or whatever the fuck. And she's an idiot because the one thing that a governor or a goddamn president is supposed to do is connect with the cocksuckers that got him elected. Right. That's the point. We really don't. It's just like sales. They don't give a fuck about your policies the shit you say you're going to do because nine times out of 10, it doesn't fucking happen. And it's not always your fault. So you can tell me I'm going to legalize fart sniffing. Like, I don't care. Are you shooting me straight or not? That's it. Cause I'm not a fucking idiot. You're the one who controls my taxes, my bullshit. Can I trust you a little bit? Or are you just a fucking another bullshit artist? That's who, if I had two pricks to choose from, who's less full of shit. Right. All right. Yeah. If I got to vote, which I don't, but if I got it, I'll take this piece of shit over here. Right. A humble fucking leader is all anyone could hope for in this goddamn country. And you can't, yeah. it's hard to fucking find one. And she's an old rusty bag of dicks. You would think that she'd been humbled by now. Right. With something. I mean, I wonder what her inside story is. What, you got a son who's hooked on heroin and that's why you legalize this shit? Tell me what's going on, mama. Relate to well, us. Yeah, and, and that's another thing, you know, you got to reality check yourself, like, when you're mad at, a government a government official like i am like and i'm not even fucking political you don't you know me like i'm no. not political. we don't give a but fuck this directly affects me so selfishly i'm upset <laughs> or not upset at least uh, just you know able to talk about it and be a little passionate about it right but also i gotta reality check myself and be like well you know governing a whole fucking state isn't easy <laughs> you know being no. a manager of a of a fucking restaurant which i have done isn't necessarily easy so i could have just you know you know a governor is just a manager that's all they are really. yeah, she's just not any good at it she you know but you know still you got to put yourself in her expensive rich ass shoes and be like hey it's a uh, probably not super easy when you gotta you're trying to make everyone happy but you end up making most people unhappy like Still, when I'm a little upset, I still got to be like, hey, she maybe she's not trying, but her job isn't easy. No. It's not an easy job. She might have a cushy life because she has things and money, but she has a lot of weight on her shoulders. So Maybe she's the reason the drugs are legalized. She's on them and doesn't want to face criminal charges. That's maybe. how she handles the pressure. I get it. 
I totally, as far as, I, I agree with you 100%. I really do. I've thought about it from both sides. Couldn't be fucking easy making a decision for a whole goddamn state. And then there's always going to be an angle coming in. You fuck this person over. Now you're not going to get elected next year because you fucked with Jimmy, right? And Jimmy's pissed because right. you shut down his business. I'm sure that's not an easy gig. That being said, this is a free fucking country except everything costs money, which is ironic. You can quit your motherfucking job. If you're not cut out for it, walk. This isn't right. a sentence. I don't want to hear your fucking excuses. If I bitch about my job, my boss will tell me, pack your shit, go work at fucking Walmart. I hear the hiring. Right. Same thing here. You talk to people. That's what you do. You talk. You tell people, hey, listen, this is going to suck again. So here we go. Sorry. Whatever. Words of sympathy. But if the right. people you're giving your bullshit to aren't digging it, and that's the one thing you have to do for your people is shovel them bullshit, get a little better at it. My <laughs> boss says, hey, Tony, you're not selling enough fucking iPads. I get better at it. Right. Hey, no, governor. Yeah. You suck You're right. ass. You're right. Get yeah. better at it. I know your job isn't easy. Mine isn't either, except our paychecks are fucking different. I have to respect you, apparently, so why don't you show me a little? Fucking hook me up, because I don't hear any extra unemployment money coming down the fucking pipe for this one. And four weeks turns into 40 real fucking quick when you don't give a shit, so fuck right. off. I get it. And I'm with both sides. This isn't fun for anybody. The point of this mm -hmm. whole, the whole reason we started the show is because of this fucking nonsense. So... I get it. I mean, over here, it's so wacky. Philadelphia, and then 20 miles south, you have Wilmington, Delaware. So mm -hmm. two big fucking cities, but Philly's obviously bigger. So Philly decided today that they were going to lock everything down. I okay. would have a friend of a friend who told me on fucking Friday, he was like, they're locking the city down. He's on the restaurant board for Philadelphia. He's like, they're locking it down. Oh, really? We're fucked. He's already been fucked once. He owns several restaurants. He's getting fucked again. Nothing you can do about it. The rules are in Philadelphia, no one can sit inside. You can sit outside in groups of four if you're all in the same family. So bring your birth certificates if you want to have dinner, apparently. <laughs> in Delaware, 20 miles south, no more than 50 people in your establishment. No more than like one third of your occupancy. What the fuck is that? They're 20 miles apart. Most of you know how many right. fuckheads come from Philadelphia to go down to the bars and they go back up? Right. They do that. Like, all the comics who live in Philly come down to the Mike and Delaware, where I hang out, to get some fucking stage time. So let me get right. this straight. In a building where you're allowed to have 50 fucking people breathe, fart, sniff, and shit all over each other, you hop back in your fucking hunt, your little Acura, and you drive the fuck back up to Philadelphia, you cough, you spit, you piss, you do all this shit on people, the virus continues. It yep. doesn't make any fucking sense to me, man. It's like, I know it does. The, the whole thing doesn't like. It's just when, appeasement. When, when, it's just appeasement. This this is what we're doing, okay, Prez? Okay, well we tried. They're gonna die anyway. We're just trying to let some of these mother. We're just trying to let the people know that we're we're giving a shit by doing this. Listen, you let people strike, and fucking picket, and revolt. And whatever the fuck they've been doing up in that city, starting trash fires, stealing shit, all summer long. It was a free-for-all. People had tons of fun until they realized the stolen iPhones had to be returned to the store. I understand that sucks. But in any case, they had a good time fucking the city up. No one stopped them. Mm -hmm. And now you guys are sitting here like, well, the hospitals are filling up. Eh, fucking duh. You're pissing everybody off. You're fucking with their rights, you're fucking with their votes, and then you wonder why everyone's getting sick. Just let them get sick, die off, and there'll be less bitching. You know? No problem. Like a... You guys go out there and cough on each other, fart, fucking sniff all you want. I'm going to stay the fuck in the indoors and not hang out with you crazy motherfuckers. When you're yeah. all dead, I'll come back out. And there'll be more fucking, you know, the lines at the goddamn cheesesteak shop will be quicker. That's it. Seriously, if you don't know that your dumb ass needs to stay the fuck out of the way while a virus is going on, then you deserve the discomfort. Right. If I go to amusement parks, I go to comedy shows, and then I hang around my family, and I get them sick, or I get sick, and I die, or they die, I took that directly upon myself, and I can't blame my fucking government or anyone else. Right. And even though they locked the city down, you're still going to have it in the burbs, you're still going to have fucking house parties, we're all going to get together for Thanksgiving. Don't fucking lie. We all know we're going to do it. 
So I'm not right. saying your government's doing anything or doing nothing at all. It doesn't fucking matter. Just know that your ass can get sick. And if you right. do, don't fucking point the finger. Do I think you should lose your fucking job for six weeks? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I guess they're trying to slow the spread of something. I don't know. It's a fucking shit. It's a goddamn shit show. But all I can tell right. you is people are hiring. <laughs> find a new fucking gig not you but i mean some people find a fucking gig i don't know man i or get lucky i don't know but what i wouldn't be doing is going out in the streets stealing shit complaining not right now it's getting cold go inside watch netflix again maybe stranger things season four will come out for you i don't know maybe something positive will happen maybe i mean xbox just released a bunch of new games to game pass there's things to do that are covid safe just wipe down your controllers be mindful otherwise there's no more orgies on Reddit for you in the future. Only fans, all your only fans are going to die. I mean, it's just, it's not good. You know, you got to protect <laughs> your shit. So be right. smart, be safe, and do whatever the fuck you want, unless you're not allowed to. <laughs> so speaking of that, we've been, uh, we've been going for like about 50 minutes already. So, are you kidding me? Yeah. Since our, um, since our, our go, all right, well, then we'll be quick with the music. Well, first of all, I want to say, I know this is supposed to be a comedy podcast, but today was more like just ranting. So uh, uh, maybe the title of this one should be, Oops, We're Sorry We're Not Funny. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What, are okay. two people going to write us a complaint letter? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> fuck that. This is real shit. <laughs> it's a real opinion, right? God damn it. I'm really fucking serious. Hey, so, I don't give a shit. You're right. They're, they're, I thought it was funny. Who cares? No, nah, man. I'm, I'm, rants are funny, just like farts. No, I was just joking. Um, <laughs> if we're complaining a lot, then I'll call it. We complain a lot. Whatever. No, oh, man, I'm, I'm just fucking around. No, you're um, right. Yeah, you're right. It wasn't as funny, but it's it's hard to it's hard to be funny when you're talking about your freedom. Um. So we reviewed an album. We listened to it, and um, it was your pick, Tony. Yes, yes, yes. For all the show and tells I never had. <laughs> this is Primus Tales from the Punch Bowl. I hope yep. some of you listen to it because Primus is fucking awesome in my book. They've uh, been around with the likes of Tool and fucking Melvins and all this shit for years. A couple of cat, a couple, like what, three guys out of fucking San Francisco Bay Area started mm -hmm. framing and roofing together, built a band yeah. and sing about fishing and whatever the fuck else they want to sing about. And goddamn, you know, fucking Les Paul and the goddamn bass, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've heard that album, you know, a bunch of, it's, what is that, like 99, 98? Something like, like that? 96, 95, 96, right in there. Oh, yeah, okay. The 90s. Well, okay. Because I know there was a, a gap in between. I think there was like it was like ninety nine, and then ten years later they did like another album or something like that. It was like there was a big gap, or maybe I'm wrong. Um, but anyway, I I got to be honest, I fell off the Primus wagon for a long time. Primus got put in the category of bands that I used to really like and just kind of. Not say I don't like, I just don't listen to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I don't, it's not like I dislike Primus. It's like, I just never, ever listened to him. Like, this album was the first time I, I listened to Primus in like, like on purpose, you know, not just hearing it, but on purpose in years. <laughs> it's probably been like, at least three or four years that I just put on a Primus album and listened to it. So what do so. you think then? No, I I like Primus. I think they're 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 obviously fucking unique, and to me they fall in the category of of Mr. Bungle and Faith No More. And that's yeah. I hate to say it because I hate the Red Hot Chili Peppers, but in that sort of vein. Okay. The, All the, right. I mean, hey. Slap bass, slap bass and funk rock and roll, like that's yeah, that's there. I mean, you like it or not, they are similar. <laughs> like that's just I how just, it is. Obviously, we both been to see the Chili Peppers, and neither one of us have been back since. So definitely, well, I, I like Primus better. But yeah, yeah I would, oh, I would agree with you, right in there. Yeah, 
that's fine. Uh, Absolutely. I dislike the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But yeah, I I don't dislike Primus and I like that album. It's got that uh what's the name of the song? Uh Big Brown Beaver. Winona's got a self a big brown beaver and shows up all her friends. Yeah. <laughs> they're funny, they're like funny rock. Like honestly, yeah. like you, you kind of laugh. They, they did you ever um hear like remember Beavis and Butthead? They had a yeah. song. Um actually I thought it was called Beavis and Butthead. Primus did a song. I talked about Beavis and Butthead. Oh yeah, they're, just, they're kind of a '90s, almost a joke band. I mean, well, they they yeah, they're, they're goofy like that, and they're they're they are almost like a joke band. Yeah, you're right. They're they're just like '90s goofy. Like they had like a video that was like shot in like kind of first person like fisheye like music video, like yes. like a, like the fisheye like lens that they used to skate. Yeah, yeah. And but it was like the three of them were dressed in like uh Mario Brothers costumes, like they were all Mario. And like it was like big goofy Mario like mask head, you know, and yeah, fingers and they're all playing, like I don't know, it was just fucking goofy and weird. And you know, they're 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 a unique band. A lot of people hate them. A lot of um famous bands and musicians quote Primus of being not talented <laughs> like chino from the deftones like always said uh like he was like i saw primus and i was like well if primus can make it as a famous band then so 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 can the deftones because the primus isn't very good at playing their instruments so hmm. <laughs> so a lot of people think that but that being said i like that album i think it's a good album um yeah it's a they're they're a unique, unique band and I I don't know if you've noticed this but when I was listening to that album to this album I was thinking like Les Claypool's style of playing bass slap bass it's a lot less slap bass more of he's like it's almost like he's playing a percussion instrument it's almost like he's playing drums mm-hmm. like that's what it sounds like to me it's like he's like he's playing a percussion instrument in a way because he's like you know he's yes. like yes like doing this with his hands and he's like making a lot of like it's very rhythmic and i don't know so it's it's different than you know just playing the bass like this with your fingers or with a pick he's like if he if it wasn't amplified you could hear you know or whatever the beat was you'd be able to hear the beat whatever it was so um I'm a little drunk, so it's a, sorry if I'm off off rhythm. But <laughs> um, uh, you know, I mean, he, he, like uh, Johnny Cash, like he never he never plugged in. Even when like like amplifiers became like really popular, he never plugged in. He put a playing card underneath his strings, so it made that dun 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 like sound. It made like a sound. You know how like yeah, where, yeah. where you. Uh, like like when you're little, did you ever put like a uh, like playing car. cards or or like a piece of cardboard in your spokes of your bike, and it made that yeah. It's that same sort of thing, and it was Johnny Cash did that to have like a rhythm aspect to his guitar playing, and Les Claypool kind of has that same sort of thing when he plays bass. That's fucking cool, man. You got a lot out of that. I would have never come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's really like hearing where you're coming from. You have more of a musical ear. I don't know shit about music. I just listen to it. Right. Um, well, he, yeah. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, no. Well, I'll ahead. just say this. The reason that I I like this album, if I'm being honest, they did a greatest hits called They Can't All Be Zingers. If I could own that okay. album, that'd probably be the only album that I bought. They are a okay. greatest hits band for me. I'm not going to lie to you. So okay. if I'm listening to it, there are songs. There's two songs on here that old Tony G's definitely crazy about. One is Southbound Pachyderm, and the other okay. one Over the Electric Grapevine. Both are jams. They do jam them when they play them live. And right. I've seen them maybe four times, and I've seen them do Southbound Pachyderm, Too Many Puppies. They're always in the shows. They have amazing visuals for that shit. Watching right. an elephant do backflips on a trampoline while you're not sober is pretty fucking interesting. 
Um, <laughs> so I'm more of a visual guy. I'm all about the experience. My favorite album by them, it's on Spotify. It's called They Can't All Be Zingers. It's their greatest hits. And it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's got um, so Over the Falls, which is cool. It's like their, story, their songs tell stories about people that are either real or not real. I have no idea. One of a couple of them, at least, are about fishing. So it's pretty fucking Yeah, funny. a lot of them are. This yeah. isn't in-depth shit. This is, but with that being said, that's not why I chose this band. I like this fucking band because when I see them live, the, they get better all the time, which is ironic because their tagline is Primus sucks. They suck yeah. live or whatever, but that's like, <laughs> but in any case, they, they, a lot of people say they suck. Even the fans say, you guys suck. Like that's kind of the point that Primus does know that they suck. And because you expect them to suck, it's kind of like seeing me live. I set the bar so fucking low that you're surprised anything's happened. And that's how it is to see Primus. You're like, oh, these guys suck. And then you see them and you're like, I don't know. That's pretty fucking good. I saw them do a 30 minute. I've seen them do their two hour shows. I've seen them do the Willy Wonka thing, which is really fucking neat. Like, I just don't know that they have a main music mission. Like, right. we're pissed off at the world and we're going to use our lyrics to change that. That's not their mission. They're more like, <laughs> we're not fucking framing anymore <laughs> we're singing about drinking and fishing you know and they're getting away with it and that's fine but when you see them live for some reason the older they get the fucking better they get they did a 30 minute set opening for slayer they did a mm -hmm. 30 minute set and they started in the middle of one song like they had already been playing that's how they opened in the middle of a song very crazy <laughs> their thing and ended at the beginning of that song and it was the coolest fucking thing I'd ever seen them do. And the guy I brought with me that wanted to see Slayer now wants to see Primus. He's like, that's fucking awesome. I want to see two hours of that. So right. while they do suck, and that's their, that's their tag, they're not as bad as they might, you might think they are. And they're fucking fun to watch live. No, and yeah. They're a band where you're fucked up, spilling a beer on your sneaker, trying to find your girlfriend and take a shit in a smelly toilet, looking up at the lights trying to figure out who the fuck Jerry the race car driver is, what's going on. That's the show, man. Like, it's a fucking shit show. And some tweaker with six teeth going, Primus! And you're like, holy shit, you look like one of the ugly cartoons they use in their fucking movies. You're ugly as shit. Why are you here? Oh, because you're a bass fisherman, and you like this song, and your sister wife is with you. This is for you. That's Primus. It's a fucking shit show, and I like it. I, I, always, I will always go see those guys. And it's not because their albums are good. That's God's honest truth. I can't sit down and listen to a whole Primus album. But they have right. like some songs where you're just like, God, just put all these together. And that's, that's it. Whatever they play live is great. But their albums, like Green, Nagla Hyde, or whatever the fuck that is, that album was not for me. There's a lot of albums. I don't care. But Punchbowl right. is my favorite one because it's got three of, like four or five of my favorite songs on it. But... You know, I, I like them because they're they're amazing live. If you like to listen to their shit, they got some fun stuff. It can't watch the, listen to the Zingers album if you want their greatest hits. That's probably the best one because they right. do stuff. But they this, suck not that much. <laughs> I think they're they are talented. If you listen to it, especially this album, like Les Claypool's a very good, unique bass player, and uh, I have a few things to say about him. But I'll say this: this album is. I think you're right. It's it's definitely one of their better ones. Probably maybe their best one. I could agree with that. And yeah, no, it's overall it's it's a cool album. It's unique. Right. You know, they're they're a they're a funny band. This is a funny. It's got you know, um, it's got the hits. It's got their some of their m most w what like well known songs. You know, yeah. And uh, overall, I'd, I'd I'd give it like a I'd give it a, an like a seven and a half like seven and a half out of ten right yeah for me you know that's uh, that's what i would give. that's about what i rated it i give it a, a high c low b b minus maybe i know? think that's i think that's what the band would give it <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> they do fucking cool live shows that's all i can tell you anyone yeah. with a poster on their wall it's from a cool live show that they did mm-hmm so it's more totally. of a live band than anything. I if I would go see them over and over again live. They're just to me they're like Ween. Don't really yeah. listen to their records a bunch like by myself. Some mm -hmm. of them I do, but definitely I'll go see them live every time. Every time, sure. They just put it on. So in any case, what did you have to say? Did you have anything else to say about Les Claypool? 
two things. First of all, do you remember that uh, that self-titled uh, project he did that I had the DVD of? Fancy? I had the no. DVD of it. No. We used to watch it all the time. It was called Fancy. Les Claypool's Fancy. And it was him singing, playing the bass. You know, he had like, like uh, I think it was like, he had like goggles and like a fink mustache. You okay. know, like he didn't show, yeah. he didn't show his face. And then he would had this crazy saxophone player that had like a weird like fucking devil horns or fucking octopus things going like met thing on helmet on and he's playing fucking insane saxophone that had like crazy effects on it and then he had like a this lady playing playing the sitar live and we used to watch it together i know we did i think you're fucking cheating to... on me alex no i 100 percent. you and i used Come on, this is a thing we are. Dr- we watched Phantomus a bunch. Yeah, oh. I know, but this is another thing we used to watch it all the time. Fancy, it was called Fancy. All right. Um, um, and it was. It's called. I mean, look it up. You can find it on YouTube. I, I, I am a, now. I have to remember if you're fucking right or not. <laughs> I have right. to figure um, out. <laughs> it was just like a DVD of him playing live with a. It was like a solo project he did it was cool but it was it sounded like a more of a more of a psychedelic version of primus oh now i'm really gonna have to check it out yeah it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy and the other thing i was gonna say is i think it's crazy that les claypool tried out to be and he was in the runnings to be the new bass player for metallica what yeah it was First of all, Les Claypool and, and and members of Metallica are close friends. Like, got it. They're 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 boys, and uh, yeah, they're all living the same. They're from that same area. Yeah, same area, and he he tried out. They had like you could again go to YouTube and you could you could go and you could either see them them interviewing les claypool or you could see him trying out actually trying out for metallica they went with the dude that played for the suicidal yeah, tendencies, suicidal tendencies yeah. whatever i forget his name but they obviously went with him because he's been in the band for a long time but i think it was up it was either it was kind of a toss-up between the their current bass player and les claypool and just imagine just imagine okay. what metallica would be like if it was this fucking like hard, hard, shitty hard rock, fucking radio metal, and but the bing, 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 bong, bong, like just bing, bing, like fucking weird slap bass. No, I, I can't. It doesn't, so, it fit. but I, I would probably like Metallica again, <laughs> maybe because it'd be so fucking weird. I don't know. Especially if they covered Primus, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and you got, you got Kurt up there, like Professor <laughs> yeah, right? Like, like what? I mean, who wouldn't try out for fucking Metallica though? Like, right? I would have. <laughs> so much money to be made. Fucking, you play. Yeah, they Metallica. gave him a quarter share. When he, right? I watched that. I watched that documentary. They gave him a quarter share when they brought him into the band. Who? Like, you get a, you get an equal part oh, yeah. of, the, of the take. You get a, a. Everybody gets an even piece of the pie apparently. So they was like, yeah, we're cutting you in, man. You get everything, whatever the, the that person gets. Yeah. So that that was Primus. If you ever get a chance to see him live, you know, just look out, look through the fence or something. But it's fun. Um, yeah. And I like that. I like that band. If uh, what's Tony G's favorite song on here? Over the Electric Grapevine. It's just a fun little jam. So I don't give a yeah. shit. I like jams. In any case, what the hell do you have picked out for next week? All right, man. I'm sorry, but but. Oh shit. What'd you I'm do? gonna fuck with you again. I'm gonna fuck. All right. With you. Fuck. <laughs> sorry oh by the way did you check out strapping young lad and more devin townsend or I'm not gonna lie to you alex i don't know what i did in the last six days all right sorry i'm sorry to everyone but this is what's gonna happen Mashuga's oh. album called obzen Ob- how do i spell it dude you spell it o-b-z-e-n Ob-Zen. got it Got you. Not a problem. You know I like my sugar. Yeah. Um, if you're not familiar with my sugar, all you 
three listeners. They're an extreme metal band, and I don't mean, I mean that's the genre they fall under. Is they they are one of the people that coined extreme metal. Like I said, that, that, like Strapping Young Land and and Devin Townsend helped coin that. So did Mashuga, and uh, it's just very extreme. But if you really really listen to it, if you really break it down. There's, they're, they are doing insane things, especially the drummer. So if you listen to this, I would also tell you to listen to uh, Bill Burr's commentary of Mashuga. Bill Burr, uh, the same year I went and saw Mashuga, he saw, he saw the same tour in LA. Uh, I think it was 2018, he went and saw Mashuga. And he did a, like a little, he played one of their songs uh, and did like a little like audio commentary. And he uh, like did commentary for this song called uh, Bleed. It's like the, like every, it's like the single from the album. Like, like it's the big song. And uh, yeah, if you listen, if you want, like if Mashuga's too much for you and they're too extreme, which they might be, and I understand if they are. Listen to Bilber's commentary about seeing Mashuga live. Gotcha. It's kind of funny. He has a cool take on it because he's not necessarily a metalhead at all, but he is a drummer. So he he understands things and breaks things down. He doesn't in a kind of Bilber funny, cool way. So right. Far Mashuga, out, Mashuga, Abzin, and Bill Burr if you're feeling froggy. So you got it. There's our homework. We're done, man. We made it to the yeah, end. Good. Hey, if we yelled too much, I'm sorry. I, I When Alex gets around me, I, I'm a grumpy guy. And just kidding. It was fucking fun. I had fun talking about COVID. COVID gets people upset. I'm glad we talked about it. Yeah. Kind of. Just It's not very funny right now. It's not a funny topic. You got to stay in your house and touch yourself. It's not funny. We've been doing that for always. We want to go outside and touch ourselves, and we can't. So <laughs> maybe we'll talk about it next week. But we're done this week. The world is right. You know, it's fine. He's, yep, yep, we're out. All right, bye. You guys were great. <laughs> See ya. I was doing this. I was doing that. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't doing this. I was doing this. No, 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 I wasn't, no. Just so, I was go. I was making a jacking off thing. I wasn't going like that. I was like, I was. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, I'm going to, and then right now. So, with him, okay. bye.